Hey guys, this is Eric from Precision Fly and Tackle. I'm the e-com manager here. I uh, work out of the Lancaster store. Today I'm going to be tying a simple little crayfish pattern. I use it a lot for smallmouth, um, small creeks, bigger water, you know, slower water especially. I find this pattern to be really good in. It's pretty, it's not heavily weighted, but it's got a decent enough weight with the lead eyes that we put on to get down no matter what depth you're fishing. I fish it most of the time on a floating line. Um, you know, you can throw your sink tips with this, but it kind of defeats the purpose of a sink tip in my opinion, but that's a whole nother topic. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is start my thread. Loosen that a little bit. There we go. So I'm tying with six aught Semperfly Nano Silk. Uh, it's a GSP thread. One of my favorite threads, the only letdown to it is it is a little bit slippery. So I like to get a good base on here so nothing's sliding around on me. Come back up here to attach our lead eye. So when we're doing a lead eye, just want to make sure you're not all the way up here at the bend of where this jig hook starts. By the way, we're tying on a fire hole 570, size 4. So you're going to come up. Do about an, if you think of an eye width of the hook, that's about how far back I want to be from the start of that jig bend. And I'm using medium lead eyes here. Um, doing five wraps on one side so you can see the, the eyes are a little bit horizontal right now. Not horizontal. They're not exactly where we want them to be. So I did five wraps one way. I'm going to pull them back with this finger. I know it's tough to see in the video, but I'm going to pull them back there to get them to where I want them to be perpendicular to the hook shank. Do four or five wraps this way. So now I got it about where I want it to be. I'm going to tighten that down a little bit, make sure it's wrenched. Now I got them perpendicular to the hook shank, right where I want them to be. I'm going to start my cross my figure eight wraps, cross wraps, whatever you guys want to call them. Do a couple of those. And then the big key to make sure your lead eyes stay locked in right is coming underneath of the hook shank, but over top of the eyes and doing helicopter wraps and securing them that way. So that's just going to tighten all those thread wraps that we just did. So Using certain kinds of threads, different properties. Um, with this nano silk, it's really slippery, and I don't want those lead eyes to slip on me, so I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of zap, zap a gap, Loctite, whatever you got. This is Loctite, like the brush on stuff. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on there. And come back through, clean up some of that glue that's on there. Give it a couple more wraps. Helicopters to secure it down. And then that'll dry by the time we get up to the eyes. All right. So you can see where my thread is now. I'm right at the start of the bend. I'm not quite at the straight part anymore. Right where it starts to bend, that's where my last wrap of thread's gonna be. The first thing I'm gonna do is use Cohen's Carp Dub. Uh, this stuff comes in so, I think, 10 or 12 different colors. It's just a pretty fine dubbing with some micro legs in it. Uh, for this little part that I'm going to do here, I'm just taking a real tiny clump like that. This doesn't have any micro legs in this clump, and that's fine. I don't need them. This is just to create a small ball of dubbing on the back for when we throw in our, our claws. So there's that small dubbing ball. Next step is for our tail or our claws. Uh, these are micro rabbit strips in Crawdad Orange. You can use micro, you can use regular, whatever you want to use. I like this Crawdad Orange color. I just happen to have micro, so that's what we're doing it with. So for the length of these, you're going to do from the hide. You don't want to measure it off the fur. From the hide, you're going to measure about a shank length to that jig bend. 
So right about there is where I want to be. And now what I'm going to do is come in here and split the hair. So I got a clean tie in point. So I got a clean tie in point there. And actually what I like to do is cut it now just so I don't have to deal with all that hair getting matted down on it while I'm using it. So you can see that's about a shank length. And we're gonna tie this on each side of the hook. Right on that dubbing ball. The start would core operate. Two loose wraps, three loose wraps, make sure you get it where you need it. Right on the side of that hook. Tighten down. And then you're just going to do the same thing on the other side. So, a little tip for you. When you cut a rabbit strip a lot of times, you, should, you shouldn't do what I just did with the scissors. You should use a razor blade. Because now you get this bare spot right here. So I'm just going to come in with my scissors and clean that up a little bit. Chop that little part off. And now I got actual hair on the end of that rabbit strip. Measure it out again. Split the hair. Just want to make it about the same length as that other one. If it's a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, not going to kill anything. Come in and do the same thing again. A couple loose wraps, make sure you got it exactly where you need it to be. Tighten that down. Clean up that exposed hide you got there. So now you can see my claws are there. They splay out a little bit just because of that dubbing ball, so that's what we want. One thing to help with that is to come in here and do X wraps around these claws. So what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna be hard for me to show you guys, but I'm gonna pull that back and come backwards with my thread. Create a little bit of an X wrap there. Come back and do it the same thing on this side. One little X wrap. So now they're gonna permanently stay splayed out even though that dubbing bolt does help. Next step is throwing in some rubber legs. I'm doing silly legs in the orange. I'm just gonna pop off one of those. Fold it over once. Flip my hook over. Get these things to lay on each side of the hook. You know, they don't have to be a I like mine a little bit longer than my claws, but not too much longer. So right about there is where I want to be. Do a couple really loose wraps here. So then you can pick up those rubber legs and the thread itself. Pull them back just a little bit. Then you're going to tighten. Start moving your thread back right to there, cut off that excess rubber leg, so I like those laying in the middle of the fly, this piece of rabbit's being a little unruly here, but I like those laying in the middle of the fly like you can see there, so now the last step well, not the last step, but majority of the body here is just going to be a dubbing loop. So for those of you that don't know, to do a dubbing loop, I'm going to pull out, I probably got about two foot of thread here pulled out of my bobbin. I'm going to cross it up and create a loop. Spin my thread around that loop and secure it back to the hook shank. 
and then move my thread forward. Using that Cohen's carp dub again. This one you want to make sure you get some rubber legs in there. So pull out a couple clumps of it. Put that in a dubbing loop. Put that in the dubbing loop, like I said. Grab your. I use like I like this loon tool. It's small. It's not too long. I don't like the dubbing loop tools that are real long and get in your way of everything when you're trying to tie it in. So I like these smaller tools for this. I'm trying to open this up to get a little more of this secured in here. We're going to spread this out, try and get fibers all over this whole loop. So you can see that's what my dubbing loop looks like before. I'm going to put my finger here and spin this. I'm going to spin it slow to start just because I'm a little long here and it'll run into the table. So we got that. Use my dubbing pick and just pick this out just a little bit before I wrap it, not too much. Let's move this thread above the eyes in case it wants to spin on us at all. Just start doing touching wraps the whole way up the body. Get that as far back into those rabbit strips as you can. So I'll preen this back a little bit as I'm wrapping it. Uh, it's not completely necessary because we are creating a crayfish body. So we're going to pick it out at the end. We don't need to have long flowing fibers going out the back. So once I get up to this point, up to the eyes, I'm going to cross them on the bottom of it. Come back over top. Pull these fibers back so they're not laying out the front of the hook. And then I'm going to cross the top of it. Bring it back over here and just do one wrap to secure it up front. A couple wraps behind and in front of that dubbing loop. Don't want that pulling out on us. Now that that loop secured, cut it off. And you can see I got coverage over the whole thing around the eyes. That's pretty much the end of the fly besides picking it out, doing a quick whip finish on it and picking it out. Just come back in with our pick. So the nice thing about this carp dub is the micro legs for a crayfish pattern. They're, I mean, about as buggy as it can get. But if you do it on a dubbing noodle, those legs tend to really get caught up and don't come out when you pick them. So we're going to pick those out. We got one here that's stuck, so we'll do that. And then that's the end of your fly. Super easy little crayfish pattern. Um, doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be super pretty. Catches fish. Um, you guys need any of these materials? On the website, precisionflyandtackle.com. Got everything on there. Any of the shops, stop in and talk to us about it. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.